So welcome, Mr. Ringer. You are the CEO Hello. of Sustainable Asset Management based in Zurich. Um, you once mentioned that sustainability, which also is in the title of your company, has a very complex nature. So maybe you would like to define that to us. What is sustainability? Mm -hmm. I mean, our understanding of sustainability is related to financial markets. So we're uh, an asset management company and uh, the definition of sustainability has a relation to shareholder value. Mm -hmm. And for us, sustainability is creating shareholder value by embracing long-term uh, risk and opportunities that are derived from uh, economic, social and environmental uh, issues. So it's about long-term shareholder value. And um, one of your favorite quotes, I've been told, you're probably not aware of this, is <laughs> <laughs> that opportunities multiply as they are seized. Um, how's, that, how's that related? How is the, the long-term aspect flowing into this? I mean, if you look at the challenges of, of uh, sustainability, of the uh, environmental dimensions that uh, mankind is facing as per today and also probably for the next uh, few generations, a lot of people are afraid that this is you know, only about risk, it's about destruction, but it also has a lot of opportunities and I think in order to overcome those uh, challenges, one has to see the opportunities and, and go for that. And then, over the last uh, you know, 10 years, we have seen mm -hmm. and invested in a lot of uh, interesting and uh, high potential products and companies with, with that respect. Is, is there any um, example or story that you think was a very good case? I mean, one, one uh, area is the private equity area. So we were an early investor in new technologies and mm -hmm. companies that have a tough time to find investors, even though they have interesting uh, technologies. Uh, we have an example uh, in, a, in a company in the, in the UK, so it's a, a company that produces out of uh, wave uh, energy electricity. We have been an early investor and now we're going to do an IPO in uh, probably next year. So that's a good example of mm -hmm. how you can you know, really leverage opportunities in that area. And how long was the time between your funding and then the IPO? I mean, we started investing four years ago, but the company existed some two years uh, earlier, so it's about six, seven years. I mean, uh, that's the time frame it takes. But that's not particularly long term, is it? I mean, but in financial markets, maybe. everything that, that oh, okay. goes above uh, a day okay. or so is long term. Yeah, yeah. And, and are there also, mm, well, negative examples? For me, the disappointing was, you know, how long it took that investor really uh, recognize that this is becoming more important and also has an impact on, on, on shareholder value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it comes to risk adjusted returns, how, how does that integrate into your investment model? How, how do you risk adjust your, the returns you're planning for? I mean traditional financial analysts includes uh, uh, you know, financial aspects, but there are a lot of non-financial aspects as well that you have to mm -hmm. include in the relation like uh, human capital management, like corporate governance structure, like uh, you know, environmental risk uh, of a company. And, and we have quantified those uh, areas and included in our discounted cash flow model. So as an example, if uh, a company has a, has a, a bad corporate governance, it has a higher weighted average cost of capital. So the price of the company in the discounted cash flow model is much lower than it would have a, a good corporate governance model, as an example. Same goes with carbon emission exposure mm -hmm. or with, with other risk uh, areas that we include in the model. If Lord Brown of British Petroleum would be here today, um, what would you discuss with him? I would discuss corporate governance. Uh, <laughs> no, I would. Uh, I mean, I have a strong interest in, 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 in the energy sector mm -hmm. and in the opportunities that uh, he, as a, as a you know representative of, of one of the largest energy uh, supplier, sees in alternative energies. I mean, that I see a huge potential there. But of course, it would be interesting to learn more about uh, from one uh, of the largest fossil fuel suppliers in that respect. Do you think they are enough transparent in this respect? The large the energy, the sector? yeah, the sector, energy. I mean, that's a sector we follow very closely, mm -hmm. and, and you see huge discrepancies. I mean, there are companies that are quite transparent, mm -hmm. and that there are companies that uh, are are you know quite uh, intransparent. So mm -hmm. it's it's not a question of the sector; it's really a question 
of the uh, of the companies within the sector overall i would say we have quite good information yet out of the energy sector there are you know sectors that are less transparent like uh, financial sector as mm -hmm. an example <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice closing remark. <laughs> Perhaps a good idea for next year's program. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. That's a good input. So, thank you very much, Mr. Ringer. Thank you.